Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out UDog. This is a tabletop game that you can currently find on Etsy. The price range is between $55 and $95 plus shipping, depending on how many modular boards that you get. The number of modular boards that you get will determine the player count. So if you've got a large gaming family or gamer group, and you play together on a regular basis, then you may want to splurge on the $95 version that you see in front of you. It supports up to eight players. However, you can reduce that at any point in time by simply removing these modular boards and then making them fit together so that the area is smaller. However, if you're a smaller gamer family and you never foresee yourselves going above a player count of four, then you may want to get the smaller $55 version. You can also buy uh, expansion packs on the Etsy page, which basically are just these smaller boards so that, let's say that you've got a family of four, but you've recently expanded, found a gamer group, whatever, and now you want to support a larger player group on a regular basis, you can do that by purchasing these separately. I'll have a link in the below description to the Etsy store page so that you can look at the ones that you want, and then if you're interested in buying the game, you can buy it from there. This video is going to be a quick overview that is simply going to complement my written review. I'll put a link to that in the below description as well. Okay, so I've removed the smaller modular boards and fit the larger ones together in order to form the four-player version of the game. You can also play with two players with the same exact setup. Now, that brings me to my next point. Your dog is primarily a team-based game. Your partner will be sitting across from you. So if I'm green, my partner will be red. If I'm yellow, my partner will be blue, at least in this example. In a two-player game, one player will assume the role of two colors. Green and red, yellow and blue, again, at least in this example. The objective of this game is to get all of your marbles from the kennel, around the board, into these home spaces. Sound familiar? Sounds a lot, a lot like Trouble or Sorry. If you've ever played Trouble or Sorry, then you'll fit right in here. You'll know what you're doing, no problem. The general flow of play is this. You're going to be playing cards that you're dealt, and you're going to move the marbles around the board, trying to get into these home spaces. The first player that is able to do so will then use their cards to help their teammate move their marbles into their home spaces. And the team that manages to completely get all of their marbles home will end up winning the game. Okay, so how does a typical round play out? Well, at the beginning of every round, the dealer will deal so many cards to all of the players. The number of cards depends on how many cards were dealt prior to that. For the very first round of the game, the dealer will deal six cards to each player. Once that round is done and that is played out, the next player clockwise will deal five to each player. Once that round is played out, the next player clockwise will deal four to each player, and so on and so on. Three, two, and then finally it goes back to six again, and then five, four, three, two. Then again, it just keeps repeating over and over and over again. So again, the number of cards that you get will depend on how many cards were dealt prior, with the game starting at six, okay? After players receive their cards, they're going to deal or give one of their cards to their partner face down. Their partner will give them one face down, and then they'll be able to look at them and see what they got. Going clockwise, players will play a card face up and then move a marble if they're able to. There is a quick guide here on what all of the different cards do. Ace and the king will let you start a marble from the kennel onto the start space. Just as a quick note, if you're on the start space, just having moved out of the kennel, you're safe. No one can land on you and send you home like in trouble, okay? But in order to get out of the kennel, you have to play an ace or a king. The ace and king also lets you move so many spaces as indicated here. The jack lets you switch with another player. You cannot switch with your own marbles. The seven lets you split move with two or more pieces. It also allows you to burn another player. Burning simply allows them to... Um, jump a player and send them back to start. Normally, you'd have to land on another piece in order to send them home. But with a seven, you're able to jump over them, burn them, and then send them home. So seven is an extra way of sending someone home. It's sort of like the slide in Sorry, but 
it's with the seven. It's, it's combining a number of different mechanics there. You've got the four, which allows you to move backward. Again, heavily inspired by Sari because there is a four card in Sari that lets you move backward. Uh, the queen lets you move forward by 12, and then the number card lets you move that many number of spaces. There are jokers in the decks as well. There's two decks of cards there. So there's four jokers, and they can serve as any other card. Okay? So like I said, players are going to be playing cards, moving their marbles around the table, trying to get them home. If a player cannot legally play something because maybe they're stuck at home or whatever, they have to discard all of their cards and then wait for the next round in order to get more and keep playing. Okay, so that was just a general overview of how the game was played. There are more rules found in the rulebook that I did not cover. I'll let you guys explore that on your own, or you can read about them in my review. So what did I think about this? Well, I have mixed opinions. Let's start with the positives. On the plus side, the quality is very, very good. Um, these wood pieces, they fit together very nicely. The game looks nice. I love the colors. The modular boards are a nice touch. You can easily expand or reduce the board so that you can, if you've got a large group or small group, or if you've got a mix and match from week to week, you'll be able to fit any number of players with the larger uh, $95 game. Another positive is that this game is heavily inspired by Sorry and Trouble. So this game will be able to support kids or adults of any age. It's, it's not going to be an issue. There's not a whole lot of learning to do with this. Yeah, there's a slight learning curve with what the different cards do, but again, if you've played Sorry or Trouble, you're going to know that you need to get stuff around the table and get home. That's, that, is, that is the general premise of Trouble or Sorry. It's, it's the same thing here. By that same token, this game is heavily inspired by Sorry and Trouble, and that's both a positive and a negative. It's a negative in the sense that it doesn't do anything different. It still has, like Sorry, it has cards. Like Trouble and Sorry, you're trying to move stuff home. It doesn't do anything super unique to give it that extra twist that it needs to set itself apart from other similar games of the genre. If I were to go to a store, look at the price of, say, Trouble or Sorry on the store shelf, and go, okay, 20 bucks for a game of Sorry or Trouble, I'm just estimating, mind you. Or do I want to spend $55 to $95 on a game that's a gussied up version of it? That would be, as a consumer, a good question. I'd have to really look at my pocketbook and see, okay, do I really need this game? Do I really want it? Can I get the same enjoyment out of Trouble or Sorry? Again, with the larger version, you'll be able to support eight players. Trouble and Sorry don't let you do that. They only support up to four players. Okay? Um, another thing that I didn't like about the game was I found the whole six, then five, then four, then three, dealing that many cards at the beginning of the run, that's just overly complicated. It, it's not needed. In my opinion, just deal four or five cards to every player every round and... And instead of, instead of dealing down to, say, instead of spending cards until you're out, just deal a new one after playing a card. That way you're constantly getting, um, that, that way you constantly have four or five cards in your hand. You've got more strategic options. When you go down to the three or two card hands, you've got no options or very little options at that. And there's always that risk with only an ace or king that lets you move out of here, or, or a joker if you've got one, you're not going to be able to move out of home sometimes. Let's say at the very beginning of the game, this player has an ace or king, this player has an ace or king, this player doesn't, this player has an ace or king. Fine. These guys get to go. These, this guy is out of luck. With all six cards he's got, he's not able to play anything, and, he, and he's set back. Let's say the new round comes, five cards go to blue and everyone else. Let's say blue again doesn't have an ace or king to get out. The others get to play because they're lucky enough to get one. But still, like, it, there's that possibility that one player could be sitting out for a number of rounds, and then at that point, why bother? You know what I mean? So there is a there is something in the rulebook. It's an optional rule. Basically, and for three rounds in a row, a player is forced to throw their cards in the center 
of the first play of a round because they have no starter card and all of their marbles are either in their kennel or home, they may start one marble after all play is completed. Okay, I like that, but I would do that second round. I wouldn't do three consecutive rounds. They'll be so set back at that point. They'll just be, I can imagine a kid getting frustrated. So there's a couple of improvements that I would make with this and you do what you want. This is, this is how I would house rule it, okay? Aces, kings, queens, and jacks let you move out. Make it easier to get out. And that's another negative with keeping this game. That's one of the issues I had with trouble was on a six, that was the only way you can get out, okay? That, you get a one in six chance of removing something. If you never rolled a six, then you're stuck, okay? And what fun was that? Same thing with this, ace or king or, or joker? No, that, that's too limiting. You're falling into the same trap that those other board games did that frustrated me. So get rid of that. That's why you need to separate yourself from those games. Don't make it exactly or very similar to. Do some things that improve upon those games. One of which being, make it easier to get out of home so that players aren't as frustrated. Also get rid of this convoluted six, five, four, three, no. And when you're down to two or one cards, after, like let's say you get six cards and you play whatever, and then you're down to two or one, there's no strategy there. You just simply play it. Rather than run out of cards, just deal four or five at the beginning of the round to each player. When they play a card, move, draw a new one. That way they've always got a hand of different cards that are available to them. It makes the game a bit more strategic and allows them to make use of multiple cards with every turn as opposed to it being only at the beginning or middle of a round when they've got they start with six, so yeah, there's a lot of options here, but what happens now when it's closer to, oh boy, seven or ten, what kind of strategy, what kind of choice do I have with that, you know? So I would rather have a, a consistent five or four or five cards available to me at all times so that I have the option to play cards that actually set me ahead. That might, that might prolong the game because with more option comes more opportunity to land on someone else and set them back. But at the same time, it's more strategic that way. So if this, if this game, if you want to make the game more strategic, maybe implement some of the ideas that I am suggesting. Um, and that would fit in well, actually, with the whole idea of allowing others to get out more easily. Because if you're constantly sending people back home, you're going to need a way to get out more easily. And to do that, again, ace, king, queen, jack, maybe even the ten, or something to increase the chances of getting out of home so that players aren't sitting there twiddling their thumbs waiting for other people to play, okay? So, yes, the game is a wonderful adaptation of Sorry and Trouble, but it also falls into the same trap as, uh, some of the same traps as Sorry and Trouble and doesn't really approve upon those ideas. The four, moving back four, that's another issue I have with Sorry. What if one player got, got ace-4, four, ace-4, four, ace-4, four, okay? Or, or king-4, king-4. Four, king four. Move one out, move back four, <laughs> move in, come out, move back four, move it, you know? No, no, she, I, I hated people in Sorry that did that because they got lucky with their cards, okay? Same trap that you can fall into here. So yes, heavily inspired by Sorry and Trouble, but doesn't fix anything with the problems with Sorry and Trouble, at least in my opinion. And again, the price is also eh. It's just 55 to 95 dollars, very expensive. So I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not to pick this up. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm completely bashing the game, but economically, you could get away with playing Sorry or Trouble if you're a smaller gamer family. If you're a larger gamer family, then yes, maybe the, the larger, you know, $95 version would be better suited to you. If you're, if you've got, let's say you've got a large group of kids, that might be something to think about. And again, the quality is wonderful. Um, the theme is sort of slapped on. The only thing that is dog about this game is the fact that you named these kennels and there's a picture of you dog, a, a you dog logo on this. This could have been Star Trek. This could have been Starbase. There's no dogs anywhere. This could have been Starbase, and these could have been starships moving around. The theme is just sort of slapped and pasted on. So it's okay. All right. Quality is good, but as the way the rules stand, no. It, it needs to be improved. 
in order to fix some of the problems with the other games that are in the series that this game is based on. Um, but don't let me stop you from buying this. If you guys want to pick this game up, I'll put a link in the below description. It's, again, it's on Etsy, $55 to $95 plus shipping, should you wish to pick this up for yourself. Again, also check out my written review in the below description. I'll basically mirror what I said here, but if you'd rather read about it than listen to my horse <laughs> sick voice, um, more power to you. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.